Hi, everybody. So last time we talked about the um, the five phases of mitosis, IPMAT, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, um, which allows us to copy DNA when it's in chromatin, put it in sticks so that it can be moved around, organize them across the middle so that they get separated properly, separate the identical chromatids, and then um, pinch it off into two cells. Today, we're going to talk about the details of each of those phases and take a look at what they look like in actual cells. So we're going to start with interphase because, well, IPMAT, I-P-M-A-T. Um, interphase is where the DNA is in a jumbly mess. It's chromatin. You can barely see anything there. It's all kind of one solid color um, because it is um, DNA in the form of chromatin and just uh, they don't stand out as sticks. So we see a nucleus. And you can see that dot in there, that is the nucleolus, um, and the jumbly mess inside is the chromatin. And then this is the cell membrane, that's an animal cell. Over here, we have a cell wall on a plant cell, a nucleus, the chromatin, and the little nucleolus. So this is um, interphase in either an animal cell or plant cell, where you can see um, all of the nucleus still there, and the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane and the DNA is a jumbly mess as chromatin. And this is when DNA gets copied. Okay, so that's interphase. Now, once we have it copied and we have DNA made to go to each of the daughter cells so that each daughter cell gets an identical copy. Once we've made those copies, um, we then have to actually separate them and make sure that each daughter cell gets an exact copy and to do that, um, we need to first make sure that the DNA is taken out of this jumbly mess and turned into chromosomes. And that's the job of prophase. Um, now, I've nicknamed prophase the getting ready phase. And the reason that I've nicknamed it the getting ready phase is because prophase is when the cell gets itself in a position where it can actually separate these copies. The whole point here is to make sure that each daughter cell gets an exact copy. And there's certain things that are now in the way, okay? When we're looking at a cell in interphase like this one, we have some issues here. We have a nuclear membrane. Well, that's in the way. If we're gonna try and get one copy to go one direction and one copy to go the other direction, that nuclear membrane is gonna be in the way. The nucleolus is in the way. It's just going to be an issue. We need it to go away. The chromatin is a jumbly mess. You can't separate the copies. So there are things that have to happen in order to get to the point of separating the, the identical copies. And that's what prophase is for. Now, don't call it the getting ready phase on the regions because it's something I made up, okay? And nobody will know what you're talking about, but it's a way to think about it. Whatever has to happen to get the cell ready happens during prophase. And you can see here, the nuclear membrane is going away. The nucleolus is gone. So those are out of the way, right? The chromatin is no longer chromatin. The DNA is not a jumbly mess anymore. It's now these sticks. You can see the sticks. And here we're gonna, we're gonna to start to talk about these things. These are centrioles. The centrioles are only found in animal cells, but what they're doing is they're moving to the poles. They're going to either end. You can think of centrioles as like a fishing reel with fishing line. These are lines and these centrioles will pull, will attach those fishing lines to the chromosomes and pull them apart. So they have to go to the opposite ends so that they can actually pull the chromosomes to each end. Then you can see here, we've got an animal cell and you can see that instead of just a solid nucleus, you're starting to see these little dots. Those are the chromosomes forming. Um, you also can see that there's no nuclear membrane and the nucleolus is gone. So lots of getting ready is happening there. And you can see it even better in the plant cell. This is the cell wall and the nuclear membrane is disappearing. It's almost not there. And these dots are the chromosomes forming. It still has a nucleolus, so it's still part way through getting ready. Um, and plant cells don't have the centrioles that you see here. We're not exactly sure exactly how that all happens in the absence of centrioles, but we know that plant cells do not have them like animal cells do. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff here that's gonna happen. We have um, 
the chromatin, the jumbly mess that's good for copying, becoming chromosomes so that we can move them around. We have the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane out of there. Get rid of them so they're out of the way. And then the centrioles go to the poles so that they can do the job of actually separating. All getting ready, all a part of prophase. So that's interphase for copying, prophase for getting ready, including turning the chromatin into chromosomes. Next comes M, metaphase. Now metaphase is when the chromosomes get very orderly so that we can make sure that when we separate the, the identical copies, one will go down and one will go up and we don't accidentally have two go up. Like these two might be um, identical to each other. We don't want to accidentally drag, oops, we don't want to accidentally drag another one up with it. We want to make sure that these two get separated and these two get separated and these two get separated so that an exact copy of every single one goes up and an exact copy of every single one goes down and we don't end up with a cell with an extra and another cell with, with too few. Okay, so metaphase, middle, meta, meta means middle. Um, the chromosomes are going to line up across the middle and you can see here's an animal cell and it's really clear. Those are the chromosomes lined up across the middle in the animal cell. And in the plant cell, it's also really clear. Here's the cell wall, and those are the chromosomes lined up across the middle. Um, and so that's metaphase. Chromosomes line up across the equator. And then uh, we have, so we have interphase copies, prophase gets ready, metaphase lines it up across the middle, and A is next for anaphase. Anaphase pulls the sister chromatids apart, pulls these identical copies. So this chromosome up here is identical to that one. This one here is identical to that one. In every case, we have pulled apart the exact copies so that every chromosome up here has an identical mate down here. The cell that forms at the bottom will be genetically identical to the cell at the top. And every cell produced in your body, with some exceptions we'll talk about later, are identical as a result of mitosis. So here we have it in an animal cell. You can see here the chromosomes being pulled to this direction. Here are the ones being pulled to this direction. These two cells, the one that's going to form here and the one that's going to form here are going to be genetically identical. Same thing in the plant. We've got the chromosomes over here being pulled apart from their identical copies here so that all these chromosomes are identical to those. That's anaphase where the sister chromatids separate and go to opposite poles. And that leaves us with T, telophase. Um, Telophase is what I call, nicknamed, the putting back together phase. It's basically the opposite of prophase with a couple of little twists. All this time, the cell has been copying and getting the DNA organized and separating them. But these two new cells that are forming are going to go on and live their lives, and they're going to copy DNA and divide. And they'll be grandchildren. And so these new cells have to go back to what it's like in interphase. So we have um, the chromosomes that start to return to chromatin um, so that it can copy again and divide again. Um, and the nuclear membrane is going to reappear and the nucleolus is going to reappear and the cell membrane is going to separate it into two cells. We can see that happening here. It's pinching into two cells. This is where a new nucleus is going to form, and this is going to be a new nucleus. Those two nuclei are going to have identical DNA in them, so we'll have two identical daughter cells. Same thing happening in the plant. We have a new nucleus forming down here and a new nucleus forming up here. There's a little twist for plants. They make have to have cell wall as well, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so the putting back together phase telophase has a lot going on. The chromosomes, or identical copies of chromosomes called chromatids, have to be turned back into chromatin, the jumbly mess, so that they can copy. The spindle fibers, all those fibers, are going to disappear. We don't need them anymore. Um, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus come back. They were in the way. We got rid of them during prophase. We're going to put them back now so that the nucleus can be whole and the cell can copy its DNA. And then we're going to add in that it's going to form two separate cells because the cell membrane will pinch it. And that's the overview of the details of mitosis. I'm going to show you actual mitosis happening in the microscope now. Um, it's really quick. 
So I won't be able to, um, to narrate it very effectively, but you can watch it and watch the chromosomes. You'll see them form out of seemingly nothing. Then you'll see them line up and then you'll see them separate. Back up. I want to start there. I want to start here. Okay, there are the chromosomes. They're lined up across the middle. They're pulling apart. Two new cells. Chromosomes are forming. They're lining up across the middle. They're pulling apart. Let me try that again. Let's see if I can actually quickly say the names of the phases. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And that's uh, actual amazing microscope footage of that. Now, one thing I'd like to add is that I kind of glossed over the differences between plants and animals, and I just want to summarize them now. Now, animal cells had those star-shaped organelles, right? They pull apart the chromosomes, those centrioles at either end. Um, those are found only in animal cells. Um, and the other big difference came at the end in telophase. When we split the cell in two, there's a fancy term for that called cytokinesis. We don't need that term, but it's the idea that once you've already separated the nucleus and you have an identical set of DNA here and an identical set of DNA there, you have to somehow now split it into two cells. Now, animal cells just pinch in. Their, their cytoplasm just pinches in. That's how we do cytokinesis in animal cells. We split the two cells by the cell membrane just pinching in. Um, but in plant cells, we need to form a cell plate, which becomes a cell wall, because they're not just going to be a cell membrane in the middle, there's also going to be a cell wall there. And so that's the difference in the way the cytoplasm is divided in that case. Otherwise, mitosis is exactly the same. IPMAT, interphase copies, prophase makes the DNA go from chromatin to chromosomes, metaphase lines it up across the middle, anaphase separates, and telophase um, turns the DNA back to chromatin and splits it into two cells.